Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Kranzer, and today I will be taking a look at The Butcher in a quick match game on the Garden of Terror. Now, The Butcher has a hero. I just noticed the enemy team has a butcher, too. What is this? What is this nonsense? Uh, so, yeah, The Butcher is a hero that has fallen out of favor, mostly due to the higher mobility of recent heroes and his lack of, uh, I guess, escape mechanics. Like he has all the tools he needs to get into trouble and then none of the tools to get himself out of trouble. The reason I'm making a video on him is to explore what I call like the butcher quality build, which is uh, less focused on just like annihilating people, but also, uh, well, it's less focused on annihilating people and more focused on Helping in team fights for sure, which our team fight composition is really shitty. Like they're gonna stomp my ass when I go in on team fights. I can just see that happening right now. But it's more focused on uh, like global control, lane clearing, getting merc camps, and just being really active around the map, not just killing heroes. It's a very particular build. I don't know how many people play it, because you don't see the Butcher that often anyway. But I also wanted to bring him up because I believe, I think you can't quote me on this exactly because I haven't tried it yet, I've just seen previews, but when Medivh comes out I think he might help bring the Butcher back into relevance with uh, the combination of skills between them. Medivh's ability to make portals to enter and leave combat at will. And uh, his ability to put like a immunity shield uh, on you for damage absorption, not CC absorption. I just think that combination together will be really strong when explored. Let's jump on there, Butcher. Oh, got him. So level one, I'm going to pick up Chop Meat. Which uh, brings us into clearing minions. It increases damage minions take from my Q. And when I kill a minion with the Q, it uh, gives me three meat stacks. Which will help in case I die, get back up to my uh, required amount, do extra damage. Because for people not uh, aware of Butcher's mechanics, he gets damage increase based on how many stacks he has. And later you can spec that into also an attack speed increase. So right now I'm getting a 25% damage increase to my basic attacks because I have 25 stacks, which is the max. He got the attack speed reduction on his level 1 talent. But see now he has no ability to defend that. I'm going to get in position to get this. Hide in the bush. The shamblers rise! Slay them! Claim their seeds! Now, of course, this is risky as hell right now because th his team would have saw us down here. So they could be converging on us right now. But it's more likely that they're doing uh, the bottom. Uh oh. Here we go. Here they come. Sorry, baby. Hope you got it. Yeah, she got away. So their team showed up bottom, or top, I mean. What's up? Yeah. Not trying to go for a kill. But as the game goes on, this build will uh, allow us to kill this solo pretty easily. We just gotta get some talents on her. Oh, I got hit. I hit by that root. That was stupid of me. The sun dawns. So we traded pretty evenly. A little bit in our favor. For now. Level 4. Yeah. You can go with two things here. Two things. Uh, either increase the hamstring length if you're wanting to play more safe in, you know, a 
attack from a range. You could do that. Or you can go with the hamstring does more damage on uh, CC targets. It's also pretty good. Considering the lack of CC, I think uh, the lack of CC that our team has, I mean, we have some. That we do have some, but it's not. Eh, it's not enough for me. I'm going to go... <coughs> nope. I will be going with the increased link on hamstring. It's not going to hit him from way back here. to level 7. I would say normally abattoir is the way to go if you're doing like a PvP or build. But with this build today, we'll be going with Brutal Strike. So our next auto attack will do more damage after a hamstring. So just help us clear minions and mercenaries that much faster. And it also of course has plenty of applicability in a uh, PvP situation, that extra burst of damage. Oh, perfectly timed. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this camp. <clears throat> Granted, there are people who do this way better than the Butcher, Illidan being one of them. Uh, this is still a viable strategy for him. If you're worried about just diving and, you know, getting killed a lot into a team composition that's unfavorable. And of course it works really, really well in the uh, situation where there's uh, a lot of merc camps. We just kind of happen to roll into a bad composition overall for us. But... Ah! <sighs> Got me. Oh, balls. Balls, balls, balls. Move out of my way, people. <laughs> Level 10, lame to the slaughter. The, uh, the root. And that whole time that team fight was happening top, we were pushing mid. This is kind of risky at this point in the game. I'm still not... Oh, yep, yep. Where the fuck you guys going? Yeah. So like I was saying, it's kind of risky to be doing this. I don't have my attack speed increase yet. Do not delay. Your Fuck. Our whole team's down here. Get off me. And, uh... Oh. No. No, no you don't. No you don't. How's it going? Oh, here it comes. Come, come on. Who the fuck silenced me? What silenced me? He doesn't have a silence. He doesn't have a silence. Oh god, Lamb of the Slaughter silences. Oh, uh, my mistake. 
I was trying to get my Butcher's Brand off to give me survivability to keep me alive there. And, um, misjudged that. But, perfect example to show off. Normally if you have Abattoir, or however you say that, I would have only lost half my stacks. But, the lost all of them. But, I've got seven stacks from that little group. And then, bam, back up to 18. And just like that, I'm almost back to max stacks with just two waves of minions. Now, at this level, it's kind of kind of a throw up or a toss up. Move speed is not that great in my opinion. Oh, I'm attacking the wrong person. Here, butcher. I think the extra HP will be best because of how tanky their team comp is. And burst damage. Finally, you have enough seeds. The terror grows once more. Come here, baby. Oh, I get you. Yep. That burst damage from those talent picks. Bring my terror to life. All right, uh, we got a terror. I'm gonna go back and get mana. We got 13. It's a toss-up, really. Oh, sorry, Gazlo. Sorry, I'm not staying for that, buddy. Um, if they have like a Zagara, Burning Rage is good. Although with the increased range on your Q and everything, you can you can hunt down those creeps and stuff. The movement speed, if uh, it's more like a disengage thing, really, because they're not going to run away too hard on you with hamstring increase range. So Savage Charge extra damage I think is ideal for our current situation. And while everybody may be up top fighting, this XP is still good XP. Pushing this into the enemy base is still a good idea. And they are not soaking any of this XP. So while my team is fighting, I'm getting us a bigger XP lead, which will just help us. Just like Gazlo's doing the same thing I am. They're all up there fighting 5v3. But we are pushing into their base, getting us an even bigger XP lead. So now they're not going to get to soak any of that XP from those two waves. Holy shit. I'm in trouble. I'm fucking... <laughs> All the talents are on me. Help. Uh, attack speed increase. <laughs> Their whole fucking team. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I couldn't get out. <laughs> so, yeah, that gank uh, slowed me down a little bit. But <clears throat> now with 16. We'll have Blood Frenzy, gives us attack speed increase based off of how many stacks we have, so my max stacks with this build is 25, so I can have up to 25% attack speed and attack damage simultaneously. Enraged, you gotta have it proc. You do get a bigger attack speed boost from it, but it's got, uh, it's got that HP thing tied to it, 
in the slow. The slow's already strong. It's not really necessary in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and get some extra. Uh, yeah. So that put me almost, I'm almost back up to max already. Just like that. Nope. And as you can see, I just demolished that camp. Very little effort. No, these guys saw that we were not there. Should not have engaged. Fuck. Here's that lag again. Oh, I'm gonna get fucking destroyed. That bullshit polymorph. <laughs> I'm trying. I need to, uh. I need to fucking heal. Shit. Fucking polymorph, man. this just falls into the reason like we're at a huge disadvantage in this fight they have range DPS and we don't Your fort has fallen. kinda surprised it took them this long to uh, turn it on because the advantage that they have had this whole game has been pretty extensive they're gonna get that second group too nope nope fucking seriously I'm not worried too much about trying to get on him. Uh, they're gonna get it's almost. Open. Yeah, they got another Don't one. Get too comfortable. The infested will return again. <laughs> oh, I fucked missed. I fucking missed. God. They're all over my balls with this shit. Try to disengage. Walk right into me, buddy. That's what I wanted. Get him. Jesus. Just fuck it. Fuck that. Let me get this camp. Not 20. I think we're gonna go with the attack damage increase on Nexus Blades. I think this just would be the way to do it. I could slaughter, lamb to slaughter all of them, but... Well, what's Gazlo building, actually? Let's see what he's building. No, we're not doing that. We'll get the attack damage increase. Lord of the Storm could definitely be helpful, get me out of a situation, but... With the amount of support that we have, I think I'm just better off doing it this way. Ah! That lock. You've lost a fort here. Uh, so fucking lame.
the other team has a serious advantage in these uh, these fights, unless I can get on Rainer. Congratulations, you killed that worthless tower. Alright, so Nexus Blades do the extra damage. Well done. Your enemy's terror has withered away. I'm gonna kill this. You guys need to not bunch up so much. We're losing momentum because of this. Guy's low split pushing. He needs to get the fuck out of there. He's dead. The shamblers rise again. Free my seeds here. They're gonna come bottom, so I'm gonna try to get at least one of these groups. The team goes top and gets that. I'm gonna get this. I shouldn't have used my heal already. Their team is bottom. So hopefully that'll keep them bottom and focusing on that while my team doesn't get harassed up here. Why the fuck did I heal? That made no sense. Goes their range DPS. Harvest the result of your double kill. Yeah, baby, here we go. Careful, my plants are fine. Double kill. Your terror is starting to rip. That range on the slow. Definitely gonna die. Keep Keep the yeah, them them giving me access to Rainer was a big mistake. Big mistake. We should be getting out of here. That's a very bad idea. Very bad idea, guys. No mana. Just enough. Just enough. Oh, you bastards. Okay. Well, that's going to be game, though. Get in here. What am I doing? I'm actually kind of surprised that worked out that well. That, uh, that healing from Morales uh, and Brightwing definitely made that for me. We definitely did uh, good with that. I'm actually quite surprised how well I did with damage, but with the amount, I mean, they had so much, so much CC to keep me off of Rainer. I mean, he had a pool. I don't know what alt he picked. Yeah, purifier beams. That was the wrong pick. He should have definitely again went with uh, suppression pulse because I was the damage, like the hero damage on the team. That would have really messed me up. <sighs> but he went with the attack speed slow, I think. No, he didn't. Okay, I would have went with the attack speed slow also. Like, if they would have 
spec'd better, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, they should have had no issues whatsoever protecting their Rainer from me, but they did not. And so I was just able to walk right into him and fuck him up. Now their this Butcher's build is more like the common Butcher build, where you get healing from fresh meat stacks. Uh, it's actually like the build that I use, or I used to use, like all the time. This was the go-to build that he built. This new one that I'm doing is much higher damage capacity, lets you uh, do both PvP, as you saw. I'm, I can do PvP pretty well if you got support as well as, at the same time, doing camps and stuff really well. But, of course, this one also works. You can solo bosses with this build once you hit uh, Blood Frenzy, which I can probably do it a little bit earlier. It would still be rough, but... Oh, it's just another take uh, on a very similar build. It's got more burst damage because of the, uh, the Brutal Strike increase. That 50% increase, I don't know if... Uh, I was seeing like 700s and such with my auto attacks, and we're that's we're talking like almost like a half of the HP of like a Bright Wing or a Rainer in one hit, and he attacks really fast. The increased range was actually a very good call this time. Uh, it definitely helped us keep people in range to capture him, and then of course chop meat for the killing speed on minions and mercenaries, and the extra stacks, which is getting me back up to where I was since I didn't pick up this talent to prevent me from losing all of my stacks. This is a necessity to get the stacks fast. Lambs of Slaughter. Uh, I'd never, I did not notice that it's silenced. That is amazing. I had no idea. Um, I didn't check the level 20 upgrade if it silences everybody that's in range. If it does, then I think I'm going to start picking that. I, I used to go with Furnace Blast all the time at 10. But really, it's so... It's so finicky with timing. You have to time it just perfectly, charge in, blow up, and then usually die. But Lamb the Slaughter has a lot more potential, you know, catching a fleeing target, protecting one of your people who are trying to run away. And, you know, just all in all, I think it's got more versatility. Whereas the flat damage on the other one is really strong, though. Like, if you can, if you take my build, substitute Lamb the Slaughter with Furnace Blast, and then dive into a Bright Wing who doesn't notice you, get that silence off, or not the silence, you get into her face, you hit her with your stun, and then you hit her with uh, your Q, and then immediately follow that up with a brutal strike on top of the furnace blast blown up, you'll fucking destroy her. She'll die. Right there. Unless she has uh, uh, her pixie dust thingy on her to reduce ability damage taken and stuff, she will die. And most squishy targets will die too. Anyway, um, back to level 13. I think, given the fact that they had, uh, I mean, Butcher's pretty high HP, Artanis is kind of high HP, Muradin is really high HP, especially if he goes with uh, Avatar, which he did. The uh, increased damage, 10% of their HP. You're talking uh, on an ability that's mostly just for mobility, to get in on somebody. If they have 6,000 HP, 10% of that, you know, an extra 600 damage, right off the bat. So... That'd be like a thousand damage when you combine that with a uh, follow-up brutal strike. So it's well over a K damage on most heroes, just immediately. And like on, like I said, on some heroes, that's half their HP, or almost half. Uh, level 16, pretty straightforward pick. The amount of fresh meat you have also increases your attack speed. So not only do you get attack damage increase, you get attack speed increase. That combines into just an absolute ass-kicking. Especially when you consider, like, Stim Drone was giving me 75% attack speed increase and that movement speed so I could keep up with people. By that point, I was just hammering people's assholes so hard. And Nexus Blades, 20% more damage, just rounds it out, gives me that much more damage, which synergizes back all the way with this talent and uh, this talent... You know, it just synergizes all these other picks. Um, I'm going to have to look into the upgrade version to see if it silences everybody that gets put in. If it does, then that, that would also make a, uh, a, a very viable talent pick, I think, at that level. But the slow effect also helps you uh, keep people in range so you can step, like stutter melee, stutter step into melee range, hit somebody, walk forward a little bit, wait for your 
um, auto attack cooldown to reset, which is not very long for the butcher, but you still have that time where you could be moving forward. Try to stay next to him and then hit him again. And this will help keep somebody in range permanently unless they have some kind of gap increaser movement speed, you know. Like Artanis isn't getting away from you. He's not getting away. Rainer could shoot you off, but you still have enough range with your hamstring increase to get back on him. Butcher's not getting away from you. Murden could possibly get away, and Brightwing could probably get away for sure if she uses her, her runaway uh, Z, her movement. But overall, you can see the damage. Rainer, of course, I was expecting him to do that much. He he definitely uh, performed well, and that's what I was afraid of uh, going into that game, his just ability to sit back. And had they protected him better, I think the outcome of this game would have been vastly different. But since they kept letting me dive into him and didn't protect him, that, that threw the game in our favor. Because other than me... Uh, our damage isn't all that great. I mean, Gazlo does okay. 70k damage is not bad. Well, especially not for a uh, Butcher in this situation. Their Butcher did a lot less damage. I would expect him to have done more, but of course I did have a Morales. And that's like a dream pick. But like I was saying before, I think the Butcher might see a resurgence coming up soon. With the, uh, the advent release of... Uh, uh, Medivh, his ability to put teleports down or portals down and me to just click into the team fight on that and then him put shielding me you know just like a Uther divine, divine shield but on a lower cooldown I think we might see the Butcher come back you know it, it's it's definitely possible and with the kind of damage he can put out with a uh, strong support to keep him running he is a terror but uh, I think that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed watching my take on how to play the Butcher. I think it's a pretty strong build. Um, you just got to learn how to, or not how to, but when to get in and when to get out. You can't just sit in there and stay and just keep chopping away and hope that you survive because he cannot handle that kind of punishment. Um, once you learn how to engage and disengage, you can really survive a long time with a little bit of help. And uh, utilizing your cooldowns properly will net you pretty good play, I think. But uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.